If you're interested in the benefits of a metal roof, there's a few decisions you're going to have to make when choosing your metal panels. And one of the most important ones is the thickness of your metal, also known as gauge. In this video, we're going to go over choosing the right gauge for your metal panels. This is the Metal Roofing Learning Channel. Brought to you by Western States Metal Roofing, where you can find a variety of panel colors and finishes, all while saving on your materials by buying Factory Direct. Visit westernstatesmetalroofing.com to find the right material for your project. You can find a downloadable guide of all the information discussed today in the description below. Hey guys, I'm Lauren. Welcome back to our channel, or welcome if you're new here. So there's four main decisions you're gonna have to make when choosing your metal panels. In this video, we will cover what is a roof gauge, what gauge options do you have for standing seam or an exposed fastener panel, does paint selection affect your gauge options, what gauge options do you have for exposed fastener panels, what is the best gauge for a metal purlins installation, what is the best gauge for a solid wood substrate installation, differences in gauge sizes, and which gauge is best for your roof or wall. Joining me today is the Vice President from Western States Metal Roofing, Paul Rubio. Paul, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Lauren. All right, so let's start at the beginning. What is a roof gauge? So a roof gauge refers to the thickness of the metal, and it's normally uh, referred to in a number form. And believe it or not, as the number gets higher, the gauge is lesser. So for example, uh, most metal roof and wall jobs are as heavy as a 20, is a 20 gauge and as light as a 29 gauge. So as we mentioned at the beginning of this video, there's a few choices you're going to have to make when choosing your metal panels. And Paul, gauge is actually the last choice you make, right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, and the reason it's the last choice is because depending on the style of panel and the paint finish or color, your choice might actually be made for you. So for example, let's say that you had a roof or a wall and you wanted to go with a concealed fastener panel such as a standing seam or if it was a wall, a, a flush wall panel. Well, those panels are only available in a 24 gauge and a kind of paint finish. So literally, if, if you're going to put a standing seam roof on your house, you can stop the video now. You're gonna be going with a 24 gauge uh, panel, possibly a 22 gauge panel. So there's a lot more options with exposed fastener panels for gauge. Yeah, with exposed fastener panels, you can go as light as 29 gauge and as heavy as 20 gauge, and there would be reasons to go lighter versus heavier. You're just gonna have a lot more options with an exposed fastener panel. So the first choice that you're gonna have to make is do you want an exposed fastener panel like a corrugated or maybe an R panel, or do you prefer a concealed fastener panel like a standing seam or a flush wall panel? So we've actually created a video all about this. Check out the link above if you wanna learn all about exposed fastener panels and concealed fastener panels. You can find step-by-step -step installation videos and homeowner guides on our channel. And don't forget to show your support by hitting the like button and subscribe. So is someone's gauge choice limited by the color or paint finish they use? Yeah, absolutely. And the reason is certain colors are only available in certain gauges and paint finishes. So for example, the best paint finish you can get is Kynar. And the reason you want a Kynar paint finish is because it's going to fade and chalk at a, less, at a much lesser rate. So in other words, let's say you have a bright and vibrant color like red or blue or even black. Um, you don't want that to fade because it'll be very noticeable. You want that roof to look almost the same in 20 years as it looks now. Um, an S&P paint finish will fade much quicker. So that's why in those colors you typically see whites and earth tones, tans, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Now the reason this matters in gauge is that if you choose a Kynar color, well it's only going to be available in 24 gauge, possibly 22 gauge. Whereas if you chose an earth tone, well now you have the choice of choosing either paint finish and if you pick S&P, you can go with a lighter gauge. If you go with Kynar, well, you know you're going to have to go with the 24 gauge. So if you know by now you're going to be going with a Kynar paint finish or a standing seam panel, there's really no need for you to keep watching this video, as we know you're going to be using a 24 gauge. But if you're choosing an exposed fastener panel, like a corrugated, R panel, or 7.2 panel, keep watching. Your gauge options range from as heavy as a 20 gauge to as light as a 29 gauge. So now let's go over how your metal gauge is affected by installation. There are two main ways to install metal panels, either spanning from support to support or put over a solid wood substrate. So Paul, what are the differences? So this is when the gauge is 
most critically important. Mm -hmm. So when you're spanning from support to support, you need a panel that can handle the load that it needs to carry. Uh, you gotta be able to handle the wind uplift and you're gonna have load charts that are gonna tell you how far a panel can span and the load that it'll carry. Uh, now, every panel has its own load chart. So in other words, a 7 8 inch corrugated will carry a different load than an R panel and a 7.2 panel. So what we recommend is that you hire an engineer. Your engineer will determine the space in between supports. He'll determine the panel and the gauge. So let's say you're not gonna hire an engineer. Well, if you're not going to hire an engineer, you know, if you have a small job, for example, mm -hmm. we cannot tell you what to do. What we can do is give you access to the low charts, which you can find in the description below. Mm -hmm. And from there, you need to make the decision for yourselves. So the most common way to install a residential metal roof is over a solid wood substrate. And Paul, how does the gauge affect this kind of installation? So in this type of application, it really wouldn't make sense to use a really heavy gauge, such as a 22 or 20 gauge. Um, on the other side of it, it also doesn't make sense to use a really light gauge, like a 29 gauge, which we'll talk about a little later in this video. So what you'll see on most residential roofs is either a 24 or a 26 gauge. So generally, when people are looking at gauge for a residential metal roof, they're choosing between either 29 gauge and 26 gauge, or 26 gauge and 24 gauge. In this segment, we're gonna show you some examples of a lighter gauge versus a heavier gauge. So Paul, you brought some samples? Yeah, I've got two samples here. They're both a clip system standing seam, both the same panel width. Uh, this, this sample is 29 gauge, mm -hmm. and the sample is 24 gauge. So the first thing is, why don't, why don't you pick them up and let me know what you think. Okay. Oh, this one's definitely heavier, the 24 gauge. Yeah, so if you were to look at both of these, this one is probably at least twice as heavy as this 29 gauge here. Now, just kind of as a reference, I'm just gonna kind of shake these around, and you'll see how much more this one wobbles. So now what I'll try to do is I'll, I'll really try to exert the same amount of pressure to each. So that's like that, and like with barely, like with just my thumbs, I mean, I could bend this thing over like it's nothing. Wow. This one here, when I put about that same amount of pressure, I only get to there. I mean, it barely flexes. Even when I really wrench down on it, I mean, I'm really pushing on it, I only get to about there. I mean, it's just a night and day difference between the strength of these two panels. So, what does this matter? Well, this matters a lot because let's say you live in an area like Texas that gets a lot of hail. This is going to get damaged from the hail and this is going to hold up very well to the hail. Uh, if you live in an area with high winds, especially hurricanes, your 24 gauge is going to perform much better than your 29 gauge. Same with uh, areas with heavy snow. And the other thing that's important is the cost difference between a 29 and a 26, even a 29 and a 24, I mean, 29 gauge is just a flimsy panel and you save so little money between 29 and 26 gauge. It's just something we don't recommend you do, so much so we don't even carry 29 gauge. So what about 24 gauge versus 26 gauge? Well, this is a much more difficult decision. Um, for starters, there's a much larger cost difference. The cost difference between a 24 and a 26 gauge is gonna be somewhere between 20 and maybe even up to 40% cost difference. Also, in most instances, a 26 gauge is actually appropriate in a lot of instances. So this isn't a situation where one's really bad and one's really good. This is a situation where both might work. Um, where I think a 24 gauge makes more sense is when you live in an area that's gonna have lots of snow, when you live in an area that has high winds, uh, hail such as Texas, that's when it makes a lot more sense to spend a little extra money and go with the 24 gauge versus the 26 gauge. So now we're gonna talk about gauge when it comes to metal siding in both residential and commercial applications. So Paul, let's talk about commercial first. Sure, if you had a commercial and agricul or agricultural job, the most important factor is generally cost. So for this reason, an exposed fastener panel in both a 26 gauge and S&P paint finish, it's gonna be your most popular option. It's gonna give you the best bang for your buck and still give you a quality product. Now what about residential? Residential's different. It could go either way. Uh, it would be fine to use either a 26 gauge S&P or a 24 gauge Kynar product. It really would depend upon both the color that you wanted to use or your personal preference. 
So now based on everything we learned today, let's go over which gauge is best for your project. You should use 26 gauge panels if you want an exposed fastener panel, you want an SMP paint system, you want the best balance of value and quality, you are using the panels for a roof located in a mild climate. You should use 24 gauge panels if you're choosing a standing seam panel, if you want a Kynar paint system, if the panels being installed are in a climate with extreme weather conditions like hail, strong winds, and heavy snow, if longevity is a top priority and you want the panels that will last the longest, if appearance is a top priority and you want a product with greater resistance to dents, and if the material has to span from support to support. You should use 22 or 20 gauge panels if you have long span conditions between supports, the engineer requires a heavier than normal gauge, or if you have a galvanized or galvalume panel. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to our channel as we release new content weekly. We'll see you next time. Want to learn the difference between standing seam or an exposed fastener panel? Or need help choosing a metal roofing color? Check out these videos.